Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily or at mhughesart and I am so happy that you found your way here. Today's video is very exciting. I always say that, but it's true. Today I'm going to show you how I draw portraits in colored pencil. I'm going to go over everything and I'm going to split the video up into chapters so you can go to the parts that interest you. So yes, let's get into the video. Okay, to start off, let's talk supplies. Obviously, we have some colored pencils here. I have mine in these two wooden organizers. I get a lot of questions about these guys and where I got them. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to find them anywhere for sale. I got them from an art store that was closing down and they were selling some of their display items and I haven't been able to find anything quite like them since. So I have my colored pencils split into two different types. I have the oil-based colored pencils and the waxed-based colored pencils. And those are basically the two types that you will find on the market. So for the oil-based colored pencils, I have Faber-Castell Polychromos and these Rembrandt Polycolor colored pencils. And for waxed-based colored pencils, I have Prismacolor Premiers and Holbein Artist colored pencils. The Holbein ones are actually a mix of wax and oil, but I keep them with the wax because I find they do have that creamy consistency. That is kind of cool to note. So oil-based colored pencils, like the Faber-Castell Polychromos, have a much harder core, so they keep their point uh, a lot better than the wax-based ones. They're also great for details, and I find you can layer a lot more on the paper than the wax-based colored pencils. The waxed-based colored pencils, like the Prismacolor Premiers, are much softer and butterier, so they go down more opaquely. You can get color on the paper quicker, I find, but when you burnish them into the paper, they can wax out, which means the paper can't take any more color. Uh, it's filled with wax, and yeah, once you get to that waxed out point, you're kind of done and you can't layer any more colored pencils on top. Also, the softer core means that they break a lot easier than the oil-based ones. And I find I use up these pencils a lot faster. They get stubbier quicker because you are sharpening them more. They both really have pros and cons and there are qualities that I really love about both types. So some people swear by one type of colored pencil or the other, and there is sort of a myth that you can't use them together, which I don't think is true at all. I totally use these together, and I just sort of use them slightly differently. So I usually start with more oil-based, because the paper can handle a lot more oil-based. It doesn't wax out, but I use the waxed colored pencils if I need something really saturated and opaque. Okay, so the final colored pencil I would like to talk about are the Prismacolor Coal Erase pencils. So these are erasable colored sketching pencils. I've probably used these in almost every video on my channel. I'm a big fan of them for sketching. They are erasable, which is really nice. Uh, and when I'm doing colored pencil drawings, I like to use these for the undersketch. So I don't really treat these as normal colored pencils, more just a sketching tool. Also, apparently Prismacolor has discontinued most of the colors in the Colorace line, which is really lame because I love them so much. Uh, so maybe grab them while you still can. <laughs> And lastly, a eraser for mostly for the Cole Erase Undersketch and a pencil sharpener. I really like this Blackwing one, but to be honest, I mostly use my electric pencil sharpener. It is a long point pencil sharpener. I've had it for years and I love it. And I'm just going to be drawing in my Royal Talons Art Creation Sketchbook. I really like this for colored pencils because the paper is very smooth. And you know what else is smooth? This transition into talking about today's wonderful sponsor, BetterHelp. Making art YouTube videos, I get major imposter syndrome. I am constantly battling in my head against my inner critic 
telling me that I'm not good enough to be making videos. And I think this is something that speaking to a professional therapist could really help with. Is something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals? Whether you have a clinical mental illness like depression or anxiety, or you're just a human being in this world having a hard time, therapy can give you the tools to work through those challenges. And that's why I am so happy to be talking about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is a platform that makes therapy more affordable and accessible. They also make finding a therapist super easy because it's online, remote, and by filling out just a few questions, BetterHelp matches you to a therapist in as little as a few days. Another cool thing is if the therapist isn't a good fit, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no extra cost and without stressing about insurance or anything like that. If you use the link in my description, betterhelp.com slash emilyhughes, you are helping to support this channel and you can also get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp. Thank you so much again, BetterHelp, for sponsoring today's video. And now let's do a colored pencil portrait. Okay, so I start by getting in an initial sketch with my Colerase pencils. I'm starting here with a super light color and I am not applying too much pressure. I try to start with the most general shape, so where the head is going to be on the paper, how much space it's going to take up, and then I start giving myself super light guiding lines and anchor points. So I will give myself an anchor point for the eye level, the nose, the mouth, and especially the two corners of the mouth. Where does this sit? And generally these sit straight down from the pupils. Because this is a little bit of a challenging portrait, her head is at a very slight angle and tilt, and her big toothy smile is stretching her features a little bit. So I did have to fix and adjust these features a few times until I was happy with their placements. And as I get more confident, I will switch to a different Colerase color. And this helps my brain to pick out the parts of the sketch that are accurate and sort of let the other sketchy lines fall back, you know, all those lines when I was trying to figure out the placements. This is also the stage where I will mark the lines between the shadows and the light. And I also go through and find and emphasize some interesting shapes. If you want to hear a little bit more about how I choose my photo references for portraits and how I sketch portraits with accurate proportions, you can watch my how to paint a portrait in gouache video. I will link it up in the cards in the top corner there. And you can go watch that one after this one because a lot of the things in that video cross over here as well. Okay, so we've finished our initial sketch with the Colerase pencils. I ended up using these three colors. I usually start with a lighter color, and then as I get more confident that I have things sort of in the right place, I will use a darker pencil. I chose these ones because I wanted there to be some warmth from underneath. So we are ready to move on to our colored pencils. And once again, you didn't need to do this in Colerase, you could have done this with just an HB pencil, a mechanical pencil, whatever you prefer. What really drew me to this reference, besides the amazing expression, was the beautiful play between the warm and cool colors on the different sides of her face. So up towards the left, we're going to have more orangey colors, and towards the right side of her face, we're going to have some cooler colors, and I might exaggerate this a little bit. I'm just going to use the page to the right as sort of a swatch place. So this is going to sort of be our local color. And this is an oil-based polychromos pencil, and I'm just lightly covering these areas, but I'm going to avoid the major highlight zones on the face. But this is going to give us a nice base to work from. I'm just going to lift the Colerase a little bit. Okay, so I didn't really have the right color for this in my Polychromos pencils, so I'm going to go into a wax-based Prismacolor. 
Uh, this is rosy beige, just because it's a nice, cool beige. And one thing I really like to focus on in my work is the direction of my, I'm going to say brush strokes, but in this case, in my coloring pattern. So I'm going to go sort of across the planes. Uh, so, and this is kind of a way I like to describe form. Sometimes I really have to think about which direction I want to go in, but I think generally it's more interesting to cut across the plane rather than going in the same direction as the plane. I responded to a comment once and I sort of described it as if I was drawing a tree or painting a tree, I would do strokes in the horizontal direction of the tree rather than vertically with the tree, if that makes sense. Just because I think it looks more interesting. I'm even going to use this on the teeth a little bit because uh, usually teeth are not white just because they are, you know, set inside our face. <laughs> they are underneath our skin. They're usually in shadow. Now she is doing a very big smile. So there are parts of her teeth that are actually very close to white, but we still have parts that are not. They're closer to, you know, a gray. I also think this expression is so great because of the way the smile is pulling her skin. You can sort of see the teeth under the skin, if that makes sense, over here. I also, at the start of a drawing like this, I really want to think about what are the parts of the portrait that I find the most interesting. So for me, in this portrait, it's going to be all about this mouth and a little bit about this ear because I really love ears. I think they're really fun to describe. So this is going to be star number one, the mouth, and star number two is going to be that ear, which is kind of exciting because oftentimes the eyes are the star, but they don't always have to be. So once you know what the you know star of the show is, you want to make those areas of the drawing the most fun to look at. And how do you do that? With things like greater contrast, more emphasis on sharp edges versus soft edges, and you want the rest of the portrait to be looser. You're basically going to work less on the rest of the portrait, if that makes sense. Sometimes you don't work less, sometimes you work more to make it look like you work less. <laughs> is a really fun reference. I know a lot of people would avoid this reference because of the open mouth and I've talked a little bit about this before, that sort of fear that people have of describing teeth that it can easily make the piece look kind of freaky and I think the trick to describing teeth is to not over describe them so I usually try and think of them as one band rather than each individual tooth. So you really don't have to emphasize the lines between the teeth unless that is really what you're going for. Also in the sketching phase, the earlier phase, I was picking out different shapes that I found really interesting. So for me it was these shapes of the sort of depth of the mouth. I really like those. And then this little light triangle here, the shapes in the ear, and I think we're gonna have some really fun shapes in the hair. So if you notice in the reference, there's a part of her chin here that you can't even really distinguish if you squint your eyes because it's pretty much the same value as the background here because of the lighting. So I think that's really cool. So we're gonna try and keep that pretty blank there. I know earlier I said I usually use the oil based first and then use wax on top, but I don't focus on that too much. I try and not uh, burnish the wax pencil in the earlier stages. You'll notice that I used it very lightly so that we can still use other pencils on top without waxing out the paper. 
So maybe think about that more than oil pencils first and then wax pencils. Just think about starting very light and working your way up to the burnishing or the, you know, pressing harder. And also you can totally use all oil-based pencils or all wax-based pencils. I just want you to know that you can use them together and it's not a big deal. I also think a great thing to do if you are starting out with colored pencils is not having your whole set of pencils in front of you because the color selection can be very overwhelming. So often when I'm doing sketchbook pages with colored pencils, I will pick a limited color palette beforehand and then just stick to that color palette. Because sometimes when you use too many colors, the piece can be a little less interesting. So that is also something you can do. Now up here, her hairstyle is really cool, but also presents its own challenge because there are lots of super soft edges around, you know, where her hair's poofing up. But, you know, right here, we might want to emphasize that there's a hard edge but up here, we want to keep it really, really soft. And I often, I might break this rule, but often I will color in the opposite direction of the hair strands because I'm really squinting at the portrait and looking at the bigger shapes. So I'm not really thinking about this hair as hair. I'm thinking about it as shapes with soft edges and harder edges. When I'm working on a colored pencil portrait that is more than just a quick sketch, I like to really take my time and slowly layer the colors. I also like to place the colored pencils beside me, the ones that I've used, instead of putting them back in their little organizer so that I can easily pick them back up again. Sticking to these colors instead of going for a similar color will keep the piece more cohesive. I'm going to start pulling in some of the darks and getting some more punchy pops of color, but I'm gonna try to stick to a fairly limited color palette. So these are the only colors I've used so far because I've been putting them on the desk beside me and I probably won't use that many more. Maybe I'll double this amount, we'll see. Yes, I think as a beginner, when you have all of these colors to choose from, there's a desire to sort of play with them all which can be really fun, but I think sometimes the best colored pencil portraits aren't using that many colored pencils. <laughs> okay, one thing I quickly want to mention is that the reason you don't have to have a huge palette of colors, the reason you could stick to just a few colors, for example, I could stick with just the colors I've used so far and just make the darks darker and finish the portrait that way. And that's because the colors don't matter as much as you think. What matters is the value. So I think a lot of beginners in portraiture, they get worried that they can't pick the right colors, that they can't color match with the reference and get that perfect color. I don't know who said this, but in painting there is no perfect color. When you're mixing, when you're color mixing, there's no perfect color mix. You want to get, you know, maybe as close as you can, but really it's the value that matters. So that is how dark it is or how light it is. I don't need to make sure that this lavender is the exact color on the teeth. I just need to get that area the right value. I hope that makes sense and takes away some of the, the stress of choosing colors when working on portraits because that is a question 
I get so often is how I choose colors. And really, it's just that I look at the reference and I try and pick something close, but I'm looking for the value, and that is how I choose my colors. Sometimes when I decide to do a funky color palette and, you know, not even stick to the colors in the reference, that is what I'm thinking about, is, uh, is values. So maybe in a future video I will do a two or three colored pencil challenge where I just use three colors and I show you how you can do that and make a successful portrait. So let me know if you'd be interested in that because I think it is a good way to think about things when you are drawing or painting a portrait. Worry a little bit less about color and worry a little bit more about your values. I just want to say that I think one of the most important things is to have fun and try and take some risks. So maybe put down some colors that you wouldn't normally think to put down in a portrait. As I said, if you start to focus more on the value, so how dark or light the specific color is, you can have so much fun in choosing the specific hue, choosing the specific color because having the correct values will make sure that everything still looks right, even if you're using a neon green. Okay, so I just wanted to pop in to quickly say that in my colored pencil portraits, the darkest darks are almost always a mix of a very dark bluish color, like Payne's Gray, and a very dark reddish brown, and it gives a very nice chromatic black. Now I haven't really introduced a super dark reddish brown yet, but I think I'm going to introduce this one. So layering those two colors just gives us a really nice chromatic black. It has a lot more depth than just a regular black. Let me compare. The one on the left, you have that warmth in the mixture and in a portrait, because we are flesh and blood, well that means we're related, <laughs> because we're made up of flesh and blood, uh, we have that warmth from within. So it is important to try and remember that when we are coloring in the shadows. I might have to bring in a wax pencil to really darken these areas. Yeah, we'll just slowly build those up. And while I'm here talking, I want to give an example of the difference between hard edges and soft edges in a reference. And I think a really good example of this is in the mouth. So the edges along the teeth are quite hard but then the shadow on the tongue is very soft. So I really need to soften this. And I think this is a really good example of how you want to see, how you want to look at your reference. You want to pay attention to the differences in the edges. So where do you need to softly blend and where do you want to have a little sharp moment? And sometimes you can emphasize sharp moments in areas that maybe aren't I mean, this is pretty sharp in the reference, but I really like to emphasize these fun shapes, right? Because I think it makes a more interesting portrait. So like this sort of dark triangle immediately popped out at me. So <laughs> I want that for sure. And there's sort of like a square up here. Nice little edge here to describe the ear, uh, especially because 
the edges of the face on this side are a little bit lost because of the lighting so it's nice to have this little moment here to give us an idea of the form So I think you can see how little I've described the individual teeth. I am treating them more like a whole. She does have really cool teeth, so I may describe them a little more than I normally would. That little peak of gums, because it's such a, a toothy smile, we can really see a little bit of the gums peeking through, which I think is really cool. Okay, so I think we're just going to continue to build up the darks and I'm going to dip a little bit more into the wax pencils to bring out some punchy colors like I have some Prismacolor oranges and yellows. Okay, so I think that is it for this video. I really hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed. I want to say a big thank you to BetterHelp once again for supporting my channel and sponsoring today's video. And a big thank you also to my channel members, my art friends. You guys are all so wonderful. I really appreciate the support. I will see you all very, very soon with another video. Bye-bye.